Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome back to the Ramble. Obviously, it's getting a bit cold now, so we've gone back to the winter cabin. There's a few things I want to talk about today, including, obviously, yeah, I'm getting lots of tweets asking when the new save, when the new football manager save is about to start. Um, and we'll, I'll give you a few little hints and tips about what's happening with the main save. I'm so excited. Um, plus, I want to talk to you guys about a little mini review of a couple of games that I've been playing recently. I suppose like, you know, I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, I want to talk about, and Kingdom Come Deliverance, which I definitely want to talk about because it's amazing. It's it's terribly bad amazing, but we'll go into that in a minute. So with regards to the main save, it will be starting on the 7th. So in a few days time, it will be starting and it is football manager based, funny enough. Um... Ah, what do I tell you about it? I've, I've, in case you don't follow me on Twitter, I have posted a couple of pictures that are hints towards the save. I'll show you a little thing here now that's going to be a little clue. Um, I don't know how well it will show on the camera. It's very shiny. Right, there we go. As to, as to the save. Um, for those people who, who just think, oh... It's China because it's the dragon or no, come on. I'm not going to make it that easy for you to guess, am I? But there's, you'll see, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be lots. We're going back to the old days, you know, where the beginning of the journey when we did lots of skits and silly stuff and everything. So for anybody wanting a full on serious football manager save, well, you're already in the wrong place, but you're definitely going to be in the wrong place for this one. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm still going to try my hardest when it comes to the football manager, but there's going to be lots going on in between. Uh, yeah, it's going to be... <laughs> it's good. I'm so excited about it. It's taken me a bit of planning. Um, I've had to write stuff and everything. You know, God, effort. Um, so it'll be starting on the 7th, um, and it will be daily. I'm thinking it's either going to be Monday to Saturday or Monday to Friday. Uh, I'll probably be like Monday to Friday, I think, would be a nice way to do it. And then we can have the ramble on the Sunday. And then on Saturday, we can have either a day off, wouldn't that be nice? Or I'll just uh, have a different game that I'm planning on playing. As for as for other games that are, will be appearing on the channel, I think I'm pretty much done with um, Two Point Hospital. Although I really enjoyed Two Point Hospital, obviously that sort of game is very similar. You go to the new place, you build all the same buildings you built before. But I think it didn't actually help that I'd just played. We did a Let's Play of Theme Hospital, which although Two Point Hospital is a much updated thing, it's still basically the exact same game, just with added bits that you can put in the buildings and stuff, with a bit more added on top. So I feel like I've been playing it for ages. Really enjoyed it. Definitely worth picking up, but I think we're done with it for the time being. Super Seducer 2 will be back. I'm going to finish that off because it's always worth always worth it because it's just bonkers and ridiculous. Right. Now I want to talk to you about Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is a PC game. It's a open world RPG medieval, European medieval history type game. I'm, I'll... With re regards to this game and Red Dead Redemption, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, so don't panic. Um, I'll just sort of broadly talk about it. But Kingdom Come Deliverance is is bizarre, is a bizarre game. Now, I know both of the games I'm about to talk about are sort of open worldy things. I'm not, as some of you are aware, I'm not a massive fan generally of open world games. Um, I played Witcher Three, thought it was beautiful and amazing, and just had maybe eight hours into it and it just sort of didn't pick it up again um even things like elder scrolls like even sort of skyrim and stuff i've maybe got 20 hours in i kind of go oh that's cool but i kind of like more slightly linear storylines and everything where you can just then they can focus on the story more there's less sort of fluffy bollocks that they have to put around the outside of the game to keep the whole world interesting and and that's one of um, Kingdom Come Deliverance's sort of slight issues is that, and I think that happens with all these sort of open world games, is that usually the main storyline of one of these big open world games is you're saving the world or you're saving the country or you're saving a, a big epic storyline. And in between all that, while you're on your way to save the planet, somebody asks you to deliver bread or somebody asks you to go and kill a wolf that's eaten their sheep. And it's a weird juxtaposition of, 
well, hang on, I'm a bit busy saving the world. I'm this renowned hero of the land, and you're telling me to go and clean up pig shit or something for some weird random side quest. And I think that's why I struggle quite a lot with these open world games. And Kingdom Come Deliverance actually is a really good but terrible game it's a it's a it's a weird one I, i've put more hours into it than i normally do with these open worlds i like to experience them and explore a bit and then kind of yeah maybe play a bit of the main story etc and in kingdom come deliverance you start off as a little blacksmith son in a little town in medieval europe and you can't even read and it's really clever you pick up a book and you just actually can't read it you and you're just a you know a simple man living off the land etc etc and then you get caught up in this big story of wars and stuff like that as you'd expect and i like the system of using a skill to level it up as opposed to you have now reached level two what would you like to put your skill point into there's still skill points to put put into but like you would level up your sword ability, so therefore you can have a special move or something like this. And you, with the game, you actually feel like you're an absolute idiot at the beginning. You can't swing a sword, you can barely fist fight, and it. And I like that progression of it. And, you know, you don't get a horse until later, because obviously, you know, you're just a peasant, so you don't get horses and stuff. But you get pulled into this amazing story, and the, story, the main story is really intriguing, and I think that's what carried me playing it for so long. The problem with the game is, it is so buggy. It's it's like a Bethesda game on steroids. It's amazingly buggy. When I saw it first come out a few months ago, I looked at it and I heard, I read some reviews, and people were saying, "Oh my god, it's it's game breakingly buggy." Like you'll be walking upstairs and you'll just fall through the world, or you'll get stuck, you can't move, and it's and it's and the trouble. Another thing, you can't save any when any time you want which with a game that's really buggy if you can't save it when you want you can only save during quests certain auto saves after certain checkpoints but also you can go to bed and sleep and that's a save which is nice for immersion but when it's there's so many bugs you'd kind of want to save quite regularly maybe have a, like a five rolling save of <laughs> stuff i'll tell you a couple of the bugs um just for sort of comedy value so that's why i waited a couple of months just to make sure I thought well i'll let them fix the bugs um, because everybody said it's a really good game once they fix the bugs. So I thought I'd give it a few months. I'd heard there was lots of bugs fixed, but there's still so many. I think what they've done is fixed all the sort of game breakery stuff, but there's some still comedy bugs. Like, there is a sneak mechanic in the game. Um, I don't know how it works. I've tried sneaking up. I'm, I'm crouched down. I'm like a ninja. I've even got a perk that allows me to sneak better in the rain. And I'm like, I'm a fucking ninja, boys. I'm going to get this guy. And he sees me from like three miles away. He goes, oh, who's that over there? And I'm like, how have you spotted me? And I don't really know how the sneak mechanic works. There's also <coughs> a problem with just terrain generally. And this happens with quite a lot of games, especially sort of non-AAA games, is that obviously a lot of time you've got a horse or you're running around. Sometimes you can just run through this little bush sometimes it's like a bush that is actually a slab of concrete and it's you, you just get stuck everywhere and you're trying to get around it and, and so pathing is a little bit of a problem and also on slopes and stuff but my single favorite bug <laughs> that i had was i had to do this quest where we had to go to a bandit camp and in this camp there was also a mine and so we had to so the idea was, so I spoke to this knight that was going to help me, and he's like full decked out, full plate. He's a badass, old dude, right? And we're like, okay, we've got to go to this camp. So we ride up to the camp, and he says, okay, let's get off here, look. And there was like five or six bandits outside, outside this mine that we had to kill off. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So we start, we wade into combat, and combat is... I don't like it personally. It's it's lots of it's very much like chivalry stuff like this. So you're sword fighting. Most of it's melee. You do have a bow and stuff like that, but most of it's melee combat. And it's you can block certain angles and you can go for counter strikes and all that sort of stuff. It's it's fine when you're one on one fighting, but any more than one guy you're fighting, the targeting system jumps around all the time, and it's you end up just sticking your ass out at random enemies when you don't want to. But anyway, so we got into this camp. We were fighting. I'm taking too much damage. I'm I'm trying to be the tank, and I'm like, why? I've got this crappy leather armor. I should probably let the dude in full plate, you know, 
get stuck in and I'll just go on the edge and poke shit. So <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. But then I was there was an archer. He was, he was doing too much damage and I died. Right. So then it reloads to the last checkpoint, which thankfully was just before the mission. So it reloads the checkpoint, which is in the local inn, just before I talked to this old knight to get him to help me. So I was like, okay, ran straight up to him. Um, and he was just getting out of bed. Spoke to him and said, look, same conversation. Can you help me? He's like, yeah, cool. Right, like that. And then a little loading screen, like before. And then we appear just outside the bandit camp. Exactly like before. Only one difference. He turned up in his pants. <laughs> he was wearing no armor. No plate armor or anything. And I think it was because the first time I'd spoke to him, he was just standing at the inn. And so that was fine. This, when it reloaded and I spoke to him, he was standing. Um, he was just he was just getting out of bed. But instead of the game going, OK, well, obviously he's going to get ready for the mission. He just turned up. He's riding a horse. He's got a big shield and a sword and a nightgown. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, okay, is it just a visual bug or is is he actually just not wearing armor? <laughs> so I let him go in first and he died like almost instantaneously because obviously he's in a nightgown. And and that, at the time, I, it didn't, it, 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 it annoyed me at the time. But then afterwards it was just, it was just quite funny. But there's lots of those little weird bugs that eventually, and there was a couple of other, and I think the combat, was the thing that really sort of killed it for me. There's one um, sort of boss fight type thing where you fight through waves of dudes with an army yourself and you and you win and you get up and then you have to do a boss fight one-on-one -on -one with this boss in a room where nobody can escape. You climb a ladder, you're in a room, one-on-one. -on -one. But the first time I got there, the... I, I had a slither of health by the time, because I didn't know what was going on. So I battled my way through, got to this bit. I was like, shit, it's a boss fight. I've got 5% health. Trouble is in the game, when you're low on health, the screen goes red. When you're really low on health, it is dark, it is red. And great for realism, I guess. Just blood streaming through your eyeballs. But I couldn't see what the fuck I was doing. And I was like, okay, I'll try and fight this guy. I can't get hit. He destroyed me, obviously. Um... And then I was like, okay, and it reloads the last, the fight, and it's and it's back at the start of the boss fight. So I I start with five percent health. I'm like, oh fuck. So I tried it maybe five times, and I was like, I'm, I'm never going to do this on no health. So I had to reload a save that was way back, and catch up again, get to the boss fight with more health. It's still a tough fight, so I got there with about 50, 70, 60 percent health, and I was like, okay, that's about as best as I could do. I re did this thing a bunch of times and then it's a really tricky fight obviously it's a boss fight and he was just kicking my ass i tried putting poison on my blade see if i could do more damage uh, maybe i was under level you never quite know what sort of gear you should have like i don't know if uh, by that time if i'd done more of the side quests would have i have had much better armor better weapons etc it doesn't the game doesn't really hold your hand in that way which is both good and bad but then i'm like this guy, I'm hitting him 20 times and it's taken this much of his health. He's hit me once once, and it's taken the same amount of health off me. And I'm like, I just can't do this fight. I did it 20, 30 times. So I, I Googled it and I was like, how to beat the boss, dude. It, it, like, this is not an end boss of the game. This is like the first boss you're fighting. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's. I'm going to fight this dude. I'm going to work out the best method. Maybe you have to just strafe round him or something like maybe as a weak point or something like his weakness to. Um, and there was lots of people going, oh, you know, oh, it's it was easy for me. And then I'm thinking, well, am I just shit? Well, I am. I know I'm not great at games, but maybe I'm just under leveled. I'm under geared. But there's nothing I can do about that now unless I load an old save up and then go and do a bunch of side quests. And that just seems ridiculous. So I thought, OK, well, I, I could try because you start at, when it loads, you start opposite ends of the room, right? So you're like here and here, far corners of the room. And there's about 20 yards between you. And as soon as it starts, he runs towards you. And I was like, okay, what if, if I poison my blade plus and tr just try and do my best. And maybe I, I can shoot him with an arrow before he gets close, just to reduce his health a little bit, just to give me a bit of better chance. So I thought, so the first time I was like, okay, load it in. I'm going to quickly, if I've got enough time, try and pull out an arrow, shoot him, 
and then start fighting him. So I went, it loaded, I pulled back an arrow and he was charging towards me and I literally like just got the arrow off in time and I one shot him. Shot him right through the eye socket. He was dead. I was like, I've just done this 40 times and it's been an absolute nightmare, but one arrow to the head and he's dead. I was like, this... Yeah, so as much as I love the game, and I really do love the main storyline, I'll probably watch like the main story on YouTube. Um, it was just... There were so many bugs, so many irritating little bugs and stuff that that just absolutely do your head in. And it's a shame because there's so it's it's such a clever game. So if you don't mind dealing with all the random shit... Um, give it a go. Well, hopefully they'll continue to sort of fix bugs and smooth it out a little bit because it's well worth a, well worth a go. Uh, finally, I want to talk about Red Dead Redemption. Again, no spoilers. I'll keep it vague. I haven't actually played a massive amount. I've played about 15 hours into Red Dead so far. Again, open world, which I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of. Uh, Western, not a fan at all of Westerns. N have no interest, really. So... And I played a bit of Red Dead Redemption years ago. I don't even remember it other than it was horses and shooting shit. So I went into it, but I, you know, I really wanted to sort of play it. First thing I want to say, just why isn't it on the PC? I know why it's not, because they want to make more money. But please, I would just put it on the PC. There is rumours, because people have searched the, far, the folders and stuff, to suggest that it will eventually be a PC game. Um, but that probably they'll probably wait a year or two, and then... When they've hoovered up all the console money, then they'll just sort of chuck it on PC just to make a few extra quid at the end. That's what it feels like, I imagine, will happen. Um, because just, it's, games are just, I, I'm a PC, hashtag PC Master Race dude, right? I'm sorry if you're a console bum. But um, I just like shooting with a mouse and keyboard. Shooting with a controller is just painful when you use a mouse and keyboard. Even with the auto-aim stuff, it's... Yeah, I don't like it. But as as a whole, the game is absolutely beautiful. It's Everybody said it. It's, it's just the attention to detail, the ball shrinkage when it's cold for the horses, all that sort of stuff people have talked about in the past. It's amazingly detailed. There are so many little animations that are obviously created. Like, oh, you've got to carry this thing. And he picks it up and it's... And it's its own animation. It's not like a default carry animation. It's specific to each thing you do. There must be so much to it. The game is like 90 gigs, so I imagine they're all different animations. The problem people are having with it, and this is my word of caution, is that it's slow. It's, it's real slow. Because they've gone for as sort of natural and as realistic as you can kind of get in a video game, everything is a little bit slow. You've got a little camp that you have to do chores around you when you know you go and chop a bit of wood, but you have to actually chop the wood each log. It's about you know a minute's worth of just chopping wood that you kind of want to do every day to keep your people happy around the camp and stuff like this. Um, and so I I think if you were just going, oh, I fucking love Grand Theft Auto, I'm going to jump into Red Den. I think you might be surprised, negatively surprised by just the sort of pace of the game. Me, personally, I kind of love it because normally I've spent the evening recording videos, um, uploading, doing all the all the work stuff, and then what? I, I just kind of need a game just to switch off and um, wandering about doing chores and hunting is is fantastic. The story is great. The, the main storyline is really interesting. There's still... It's open world, so you still get lots of those random side quest missions and you're like why am i why this is so beneath me right it's it's like uh, my character should not be having to do all this stuff but it makes it's better in this game it makes more sense you know because obviously early on this is not really a spoiler because it's right at the start you basically find out you're like a gang of outlaws and stuff trying just trying to make your way in the world the the the, the era of sort of gunslingers and cowboys is coming to an end and so therefore you're the last of their kind, you're getting hunted down, and you're just trying to survive, basically, as a sort of family, as a gang. Um, so you're doing a lot, basically trying to make money a lot of the time to keep your, you know, to raise the bank balance and all this sort of stuff. One of the biggest issues I have with the game, there's, there's two. One is movement. The movement's really nice, but it feels... Because they try to make it realistic. Let's say you're walking in a straight line. 
okay? You're holding forward on your controller, you're walking, and then you let go, you stop. In, any, in most games, you instantly stop. In this game, because it's so realistic and there's an animation, he sort of, you know, comes to a stop. It's an extra step or two. So when, and when you're turning, it's an extra step or two. So what can happen is it's, it's sometimes quite awkward when you're in a little cabin and you're trying to loot all the items just to face the right way. Oh, no, forward, back, now I've stumbled into that. And it's the same with the horses because of the realism aspect they're going for. And there, so there is that balance that maybe I think, I think they could just, you know, the horse can stop a little bit quicker or turn a little bit quick or just little niggles like that, especially when looting and stuff. And another thing about the looting animation that really each time you loot a body, it does an animation where you sort of pick up his torso a bit, like lean him upside and then go for his pocket and grab something. And that's fine. It looks amazing. But if you just had a gun battle and there's 30 dead bodies you want to loot, it can take quite a while. Um, but overall, the game is great fun. The shooting for a console, I can, I can live with, but obviously I'd much rather have it with a mouse and keyboard because I'm a snob. Um, but I'll definitely, I've, I've kind of stopped playing Kingdom Come Deliverance now. I've kind of had my fill. Although I wanted to see the story through, I thought, no, nah, it's not, I can't, the rest of it is a bit too much fluff. And then I feel like if I just did the main story, I feel like I'd be massively underleveled. So... I've left that, but with Red Dead Redemption, I'm definitely sort of um, playing on. The other issue I want to talk about that is hunting. So there's a massive, there's a big part of the game hunting in Red Dead Redemption 2. You're hunting for food and pelts and stuff. Remember, you're trying to make a sort of, you know, a little, make your house a bit nicer and stuff, your camp to make that nicer and everything. So you go out hunting and there's various ways you can just sort of walk through the wilderness and with your bow and arrow and shoot some rabbits and then you can skin them and amazing animation and you put them on the back of your horse and all that sort of good stuff the problem is it and that's fine for food so there's tons of different animals and there's some predators there's i killed a cougar and there's bears and there's wolves and all this sort of good thing um but then and it says often when you when you sort of skin an animal you get loads of meat which is good you can use to cook it and eat it for your own or you can take it to the camp to feed everybody there that's great with the hides, it says, oh, this item can be used in crafting. And you're like, okay, cool. So, you, you know, you're doing a bit of hunting. You go back to the camp, and there's one of the stations you've got all the crafting upgrades. But I think all, or nearly all, I think it is all, of every single crafting option in the, in, in the camp. So you, there's lots of little upgrades, like you can put a oh, bear skin rug on that, or you can put alligator skin over the table, and you're trying to upgrade the camp constantly. But pretty much every single thing requires a pristine or perfect pelt of this animal. But 99% of the animals you find are not pristine. They're good condition or average. There's, there's varying degrees of how good these creatures are. So just going out on a hunt to hunt some animals is great, is fine for food. But if you want actually want to do it for crafting upgrades, you have to spend hours basically sneaking up close enough to each animal to study it, to see what sort of quality is before, as a, like as if you were a hunter and you just moved on from every, oh no, that one's not good enough. You know, deer number 37 is actually perfect, so I'm going to kill that one and not the 36 deer that I saw before then. I just think that is too much. I don't mind having a quality level of, of pelts and stuff and skins, but maybe have, make the good ones a little bit more often. You know, have a, just, two different varieties or three different varieties like a, a bad a average and a good and for crafting you need good uh, rather than this sort of pristine rare stuff and there's but the hunting itself is so much fun there's that you can track animals with your sort of super scent thing and you can see the trail and follow you've got bait where you can bait out herbivores and predators and all this sort of stuff really really fun um i hunted a legendary wolf which almost killed me but it was fine um yeah Absolutely, absolutely brilliant it was, um, the hunting. Like I said, just a few bits here and there. And I can totally get why somebody might play Red Dead Redemption 2 and go, this is shit. I totally get it. Because if you're expecting a bit quicker paced, yeah, it's, it's not happening. It's, it's, it's really, the, the main storyline is, is great. And there are some big, really big action moments where you're fighting a big gun battle and stuff like this. Or robbing a train. I don't, I'm not train, I'm just saying that. Um, or, you know, doing gunslingery things. Rob a bank, that sort of thing. 
that's great. They are amazing for those action-orientated players. But the rest of the game, I think people might find a bit slow. And it's not like you can... I don't think you can ignore the base building side of it or the base upgrading and the hunting side of it because I've been out on missions for a couple of days, got back to camp, and the boss of the camp is not happy because I've not been contributing to for the cash and upgrades for the camp. So I don't know if that becomes a an issue later on you have to keep that up i quite enjoy it so i'm okay but if you just wanted to do the main story i don't know if that will become an issue let me know if you do know or you played further but i will continue playing it i think it's an amazing game it's a and it's like bug free i've not seen a single bug it's like the opposite of kingdom come deliverance and for such a big game that is quite impressive it's witcher 3 western style basically right there we go my friends so just to sum up um, football manager 2007 uh, 2017 I've gone back two years my football manager 2019 save will start on the 7th of November Kingdom Come Deliverance is an amazing but buggy piece of shit game and Red Dead Redemption is amazing but quite slow so there we go I could have just made a 30 second video <laughs> thank you very much for watching I'll see you soon bye bye